Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, depending on where you're at. My name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist with PeopleLinks, as well as an executive vice president with Social Sales Link. Welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, and however that translates to where you're at. We're also seen in quite a few places and heard in quite a few places in podcast form as well. So you may be hearing us for the first time, but not live. So we uh, want to welcome you as well. My cohorts are on as well. Uh, let's go ahead and have them introduce themselves. Gentlemen, whoever wants to go first, go first. Go, Ted. Okay. I'm Ted Pedromo. I'm the author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and I help businesses with their social media campaigns and online advertising campaigns. Hey, that sounds great. And I'm Michael De Groot. I'm Chief Storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com. And Bryn's just popped up. I can see her there. And um, yeah, pretty much in the social selling sphere, uh, LinkedIn, and also whiteboard animation. Mm -hmm, Bryn, good. why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I am Bryn Tillman, co-founder of Social Sales GPS, along with my guys in the room and others, which is so exciting, uh, and lots of other titles. Um, I do have a book, uh, and actually, Bob will promote our co-book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not, right? Um, so LinkedIn and Social Selling for Business Development. And I love to talk about LinkedIn and social selling. <laughs> and your birthday girl as well. Birthday yes. yesterday. Happy birthday. Belated yeah. happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. I had a we won't day. sing for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get sued. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I think I think it passed its fifty year or whatever it is that it's no longer trademarked. Like last year was Oh really? It. Like I think you can sing it now. Oh wow! Ah, whatever, okay. whatever. Not trademarked. Um, I forget what it's called. Copyrighted. But, uh, Copyrighted. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think oh, you can cool. sing it now. Yeah. Hey, that's great. Not that we should sing it. Yeah, but that we you should. Sing it. I know. That depends. Right. <laughs> it depends. I don't know. Very yeah. good. Very okay. good. Okay, good. So um, we normally start out the show with any changes that we have noticed uh, within LinkedIn. And I'm talking about the platform itself this time. I don't think we, we need to talk about the um, the uh, acquisition by Microsoft because we've kind of covered that to death for, for the past couple of weeks. So so let's go ahead and get back to just uh, some more straight uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and social selling type of talk. So um, uh, anyone notice any changes from last week or in the last couple of weeks? I'll just put it out change there. Change on Twitter. Change on Twitter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. So the change on Twitter is you can now retweet and quote your own thing. Yes. yes. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So well, I, I noticed it yesterday. So I posted that it feels like Groundhog Day. If you're going to retweet <laughs> your own, like I tweeted it, now I'm going to retweet it, retweet it again. Retweet That's it again. right. Listen to me. <laughs> yes. Right. If you didn't hear me the first, it sounds like parenting, right? If you did not hear me the first time, this is mm -hmm. the third time I'm telling you. Yep. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I had noticed that. So, yeah. So do we, do, has anybody got a metric that says how many times do we need to put stuff out there before it gets noticed? I know there is this marketing yeah. metric for email that you've got to send out seven before people take any notice. But mm -hmm. what about social media? Do you have a view on that? How many times do we need to retweet stuff before people go, yeah, okay, I am get it. I mean, I've noticed, Bryn, your article about the calendar syncing thing, mm -hmm. there are two people that are always liking it. And it's, it's Social Seller, which is actually Social Ben, right? right. Okay. Signed up for alpha testing. Yay. He works for IBM. And in the UK, More yay. and he's always liking it through his social seller Twitter uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And also, who's the other guy? There's another guy. Every single time he likes it. So he does that with all my stuff, which is such an honor. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so here's, I sort of have this very strange repeat philosophy with Twitter, not with LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I am not like sharing the same stuff over and over and over and over again. 
But on Twitter, I share 12 times a day, seven days a week, automatically, plus all the other stuff I do. That so I right, right. so so actually my assistant every single week pulls out the most current thing that's been published and eleven other things from the past and will continue to recycle them. So she's recycling that one a lot, which like if you look, I might have nine hundred people that saw something this week and if you look back at it six months from now, it could be three thousand. Yeah because we're constantly resending that out. Most of the stuff is, I hate, is, is evergreen. So, um, you know, people find it useful. My symbols one, we let go for a while. And now Bob actually, because sh I shared it on people links and then Bob has shared it out again. But my original one has over 13,000 views. When it first got published, I had 300. So, yeah. but it's two, it's two, over two years old. So, yeah. You know, right. that's so I like to recycle and a lot of that's on so, Twitter. So the initial recycle is a dozen times. And oh, then no. and then <laughs> more than that. So well I'm recycling stuff from two years ago even. Yeah. Like like the symbols thing, for example. Yeah. Um But you send out twelve different tweets every day. Twelve different tweets every day of okay. of, of my past blogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But so, then I'll okay, also take, share other stuff. Let's take one single article. Sorry to, to push you on this. Oh, push away. I love this stuff. Yeah. So Bob's gone off, by the way. So he must have been electrocuted through a... <laughs> Thunderstorms. Thunderstorm. Lightning I'm glad bolt. I don't live in Lexington, Kentucky. He has more outages than I have ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So So let's say... A brand new LinkedIn Pulse article that you then send out on Twitter. So, mm -hmm. does your assistant or you, whoever, schedule that one into the future twelve times to begin with? No, you know that's not a bad way to do that. But what every single week, she has her little calendar and she pulls in like she has a spreadsheet that has all the information, including the link to okay. everything. And so she'll she'll actually um, pick out twelve of those and upload yeah. them to Hootsuite. Okay, got it. And and they're, like it goes out like at one it goes out every hour for twelve hours. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's one around uh, somewhere between eight and nine, one between nine and ten, one between ten and eleven, all the way. Through. Okay, okay, but so in that list there will be so each week, let's say there will be the same article that appeared previous week. Right. And I have, so, but at a different time. So yeah, if you, sure. yeah. And every day. So I have on the spreadsheet, I wish I could share screens on this. Right. But on the spreadsheet, um, a different page than all those links is all the time slots. Yeah. And yeah. so let's just go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So we have five time slots. Mm. So she's going to choose 12 articles to share this week. Yeah. So article A goes in 8 a.m. Article B goes in 9. Article C goes in 10. Mm. The next day, article B goes in 8. Time slot. Mm. Article C goes in 9. So throughout the week, they're all in different time slots. Gotcha. So if someone happens to always check their Twitter at noon, they're not seeing the exact same thing every single day. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I'll share that with you. Yeah, Thank I do you. something similar to that. I use Sendable, though. Instead so of Hootsuite? Have, yeah. I used to use Hootsuite. We had to manually upload every week. You don't anymore? No. Sendable, I build queues. So I have a Google Plus queue, a Twitter queue, a LinkedIn queue, a Facebook queue. And I have about 100 posts that I have in there, and they recycle automatically. Okay, big win for my day. Can you put that link in? Sure. <laughs> and then as, as I find new content AI and add to it. losing jobs in this country because of AI. But <laughs> no. no, it's awesome because the queues just automatically restart. And then I can reshuffle the queues and change the order. And then as I find new content, like I'll what see your What is the cost? Send uh, um, it's like 40 or 50 a month, but it's cheaper than an assistant. It's cheaper than my Hootsuite. <laughs> That's the same right. as my Hootsuite. Yeah, so I've been using it for about eight months now. 
And I can ask you, you can we add can images. Do that for GPS. With Hootsuite, I couldn't add images. I'd have to manually add them to the post. So it's sendable. All the images are attached to each post. Oh, my Hootsuite adds the images. Oh, you have the higher level. I, I had pay, the low. I pay, yeah. yeah. I paid six bucks a month for Hoot, Hootsuite. <laughs> I, think I pay 40. 39, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I'm going to definitely look into sendable. Yeah. I like the They're way it just restarts the queues over and over. So I, you know, I'll have 200 posts by the end of the year recycling. I only put evergreen posts in there to automatically awesome. go. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's, that's a mistake I made early on where I had like a really good like Thanksgiving post and then it was going out in April and people were like, <laughs> clearly this is recycled. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I, yeah. Look, I still, I'm still sticking with buffer. Uh, that's still my favorite tool. And, and you love buffer because you love buffer. Like you love who they are. You That's got part it. of it. You got it. And, yeah. and the yeah. other thing is, uh, did you get, you're still alive, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Dodging lightning bolts and stuff like that. Oh yep. my God. I, I love lightning storms. I think they're great. Not great for work and power <laughs> outages, but right. um, so yeah. So with Buffer, if you have an article, you can schedule that. You use a power scheduler. So you take that one article and you can put it in as many dates into the future if you wish. So if you want to do it and different times, and you can do this in all in one window across all the different platforms. Mm -hmm. so, That's nice. So it's, it's pretty cool too. It's pretty cool too. I also like it's direct integration with uh, Feedly too, because um, when oh. I'm really cranking things out as well, I have a bunch of Feedly feeds set and I just go boop, 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 and, oh, and it's all done and set basically, yeah. And actually, I don't know if you noticed, Bob, I don't know if you use Feedly on as an app or on the desktop. Desktop. Okay, so you pay for your Feedly integration. Right. right. Yep. Okay, well, I don't pay, right? But on the app, on my iPad, you can share stuff to Buffer without paying. Don't tell anybody. Huh. Um, and As we record this yeah, yeah. The, the integration there is much easier and it, it's super simple to do it and send it out to Buffer. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I have about, I don't know, 30 different feeds with all sorts of articles that I love. And yeah, I'm just, popping them out there into my schedule. Super easy to do. Anyway, so we went off down Twitter land and we've kind of managed to talk about some good stuff. Um, shall we answer? I've got some answers to your question, Bob, which is what have you noticed on LinkedIn? Yep. What I'm doing now, I'm keeping a record. I'm going to try and keep a record ever since the announcement last week. I'm going to take notice and write down everything that is changing or that I'm noticing. Now, it might be there are some bugs, right? Because I've noticed some stuff that looks like it could be a bug. So number one, I've noticed that if I've sent a invite request to somebody and they've accepted my connection request, a few weeks ago, that request of mine was showing up on the relationship tab. I told Bryn, you can now see what you sent out. That's gone again. It's not there anymore. Oh, it's oh. gone. That's depressing. I've also noticed. I'm going to test that. I've also noticed, and this could be because I've gone to double sign up security. I don't know. Ever since I went to double sign up security with my mobile getting a code. Right. Although I've now logged into all the different platforms. I've noticed something on the relationship tab where, and I, I think I posted an image on Slack, where it has a string of numbers instead of the date, <laughs> very weirdly. But this week I was refreshing it, and then there was a string of numbers, then I refreshed it, then there was a date, then I refreshed it, then there was a string of numbers. It looks very buggy to me. So I am still getting the message i just accepted somebody but i am getting that string of numbers too okay so that's very weird then on the mobile app i've noticed i hadn't seen it before because it gave me the first time i went in to sh share something on, inside my ipad 
there was a little pop-up that was bleep kind of flashing above the at sign. They've added an at sign to say mention somebody. Yeah. So that was new for me. I actually like that. Yeah, I like it too. Um, so, okay. I don't know if this is new or not, but I hadn't noticed it before, which is on the app. If you've connect on a connections profile, there is a highlight section after activity. There's the second block down and it shows if they are connected to a company, if they know, if they're connected to employees in a company that you follow, right? Say this again, because I was yeah. checking out your So if one. you are following a company, mm -hmm but you are not yet connected to individuals in that organization, mm -hmm. but your connection does, it tells me that they are connected to people in a, comp in a company that you've just followed. So that's giving me an indicator that I could ask for connections in that company from him or her. Do you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, and you know, I just noticed on company page a premium feature. Yeah. When you get to the company page, it says, did you know this about Campbell Soup? Tim Gates joined as Vice President of Human Resources. Campbell Fresh and 45 other new employees joined in the last 90 days. Yeah, remember, we, that, we shared that a few months ago, and I... I, I, got, I but I, I don't know if you remember, I did not have and that. And you've now got it. Great. Now I, oh, that's right. I, do, I finally have that. This is phenomenal. Okay, then I've noticed in the last week, I don't know if you had this, when I went into somebody's profile, you get a block of suggested endorsements at the top or just under their profile header. That's gone now, it doesn't appear. So all the new connections I made this week, when I go to their profile to endorse them, I've got to scroll down to their skills. It doesn't give me those at the top anymore check your settings because you can at least you used to be able to if you go down into your edit profile you used to be able to say if you want to see that or not so i wonder if that got untapped okay. i've seen that popping and coming and going on my profiles lately it's yes like a, they're testing it so if you go if you go in and you look you have the choices include me and endorsement suggestions show me suggestions to endorse my connection yeah mine says I, show me suggestions to endorse my connections and you have that checked yeah, it's checked oh so i uncheck mine because what i and the reason i do that is because I want to go down and look at what they really want to be endorsed for because they throw in words. So I'll endorse people for the top three or four that they have yeah. versus the ones that are recommended because... They are often very wrong as well. Yeah, they're new, right. new ones sometimes. They're new ones because not everybody has 50, which yeah. anyway. And then there was a funny a bug on messages that happened yesterday where somebody sent me a message and, it, and the message came in three times. I've never seen that. Before. I got that for my birthday. So I got happy birthdays. Yes. Yeah. So some of them, I got like 17 happy birthdays from one person. Okay. So there's a bug there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got it. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it was, the, it was the exact same message, so I know he wasn't retyping that. Yeah, the same right. here. I, I was the exact same message three times, mm. and identical. You know, there was no. It also didn't appear together either. They were separate individual messages. Right, that's exactly what I got. Okay, so that's hmm. a bug. Yeah, on the mobile device, if you click on it, it sends that automated message unless you go in and customize it. Say so again. I've gotten those two. But not three times. Well, yeah, there's something. Or maybe they just like to push that button. <laughs> mm, maybe the You know, I, right. well, no, never mind. You already answered what I was going to bring up. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that's my list done. Okay. That's pretty comprehensive. Yeah. Good job. Well, when do you sleep? <laughs> Michael is our bug and and, and, and uh, new feature catcher here on Social Selling Wednesday. New feature catcher. I love yeah. that title. <laughs> and that's my dog I in the background. Up, I want to be a new feature catcher. Yep. 
Sounds like a police siren going off. That's my dog howling at the fire engine. (laughs) (laughs) We've got it all today. We've got lightning storms. We've got howling dogs. Yeah. And I got fires to put out at work. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's it's Uh, peaceful here. It's it's zen over here. Good. Zen, yeah. I actually, yeah. I actually was on the phone with with Sarah Hughes from, um, or on Sky or Go to Meeting or whatever her Go to Meeting this morning, and it is, I, I, I think when I grew up, I'm moving to England. It is so peaceful there. It's so different here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it hasn't been know? in the past week, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, just wait until tomorrow, right, Michael? Correct. Oh, it was tomorrow the vote on uh, uh, Brexit? Euro? Yeah. 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 What you can I ask your opinion or is that yeah, too Yeah, of course you can. Well, first of all, I can't vote because I have a Dutch passport, and okay. yeah. So, but hopefully, when we leave, I can get dual citizenship because, as we're in the EU, they won't give me a British passport now because the Dutch passport is an EU passport, right? Yeah. right. So, no, my hmm. if I could vote, I would vote out. And interesting. Yeah, the reason for that is. Although I'm a Dutchman, I should be more European than the British, right? Because, right. I mean, the Brits never have never considered them. In all the 39 years I've lived here, they've never considered themselves part of Europe. They always talk about the continent. They always talk about, oh, when I go to Europe. Well, you're in Europe. No, no, when I go to Europe, we're not, we're not part of Europe, you know? Because, really? Yeah, mm. they always believe that. So, but... In Brussels, so so the EU kind of all the buildings that are there in Brussels where they supposedly govern the EU, they have no audited accounts, right? So nobody knows truthfully how much is being spent where. You know, it's just a free for all. There is the, mm. the, the representatives there are unelected, so nobody votes them in, they appoint themselves. So mm-hmm. it's a sham. It really is. That's crazy. Yeah. Totally crazy. At least you've got, you know, well, governments are voted in, presidents are voted in. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Okay. We won't go, we won't do the Trump thing. And um, yeah, so. I, I just kept it for, for my, no one here is really Trump person, right? Like, we're, are we okay with that? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know this is? I have to say, yeah. and this is a problem. Welcome to I politics have, talk, everyone. Yeah, no, I, have, wait, I, just, I have to. I have <laughs> never Social personally, selling politics. I have <laughs> right. never really been political, and I have never been judgmental of anyone political. But I have a friend, one of my closest, closest friends from college, who is a pro-Trump person, and I can't talk to her. <gasps> like I, I can't. Like I will just be mean. There was, uh, I was, uh, it, they've had, I've never, I've never, like, I will just be like, are you nuts? <laughs> they have a comedy podcast on a Friday here in the UK on the BBC. And I was listening to her driving in the car and they, they've got a little sketch where the queen calls Donald Trump. And because, you know, the queen's 90 this year and she rings them. I won't do the accents, but. Donald Trump answers and she goes, hi, Donald, thank you for my present, but I've got nowhere where I can put Mexico. But I- <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's great. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. Yeah. So maybe you'll leave Europe and you'll become in North American now. Yeah, with Mexico. That's it. yeah. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So moving on, moving this is on, not a pol- onward, yeah. onward. Let's what ask else? your dogs what they think. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go yeah. get the dog. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. So, so question then, how appropriate is political views on LinkedIn? How about that? Bridging the two together. That's, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I definitely have my opinions. I, um, you know, it, in, in, in my opinion, if you don't think you should bring something up at like a networking event or something like that, then you probably shouldn't bring it up on LinkedIn. And one of my um, cardinal uh, rules about just networking in general has always been no politics and no religion, basically. And if someone brings it up, 
make a quick joke about it and try to move on, which in the past I have been been boundaries here in the past. It's been easier. And, and I, and I have to admit, I haven't been to any networking events in the past couple of months where I, where it was like a truly, you know, get to know you networking type event. So I don't know if that's changed, but it's, it's usually been pretty easy in the past to get people away from talking about politics. I'm not sure if that's still the case nowadays though i mean it's it's it, it's really a lightning rod here in the u.s i mean just in general and i don't know if that's affected business networking at all Bryn, i you probably go to more events than than i do right now do you notice it um so i've been to a few particular ones that kevin has spoke one last week where kevin spoke um it is a taboo subject it okay. is definitely a taboo subject Good and Um, I, I have to watch because I do, I've never had boundary problems with this before, but I truly feel, let's see, I'm going to keep, I truly feel like we're watching how Adolf Hitler came to power. And that's, what's so scary to me. I'm watching it happen in my country that I love so much. Like I'm watching and, and I also understand the power behind the message. And I feel like. I, it's just, it scares, it's, it's just very scary. So I feel like it's my social responsibility to participate in saving our country from Nazi America. So here, here's what I believe in terms of social media and people's political views. I think that ever since Twitter existed, people are much freer in expressing their view on things. Yeah. And there are a lot of people expressing their view about Donald Trump, about the EU referendum, about all of the kind of political things, whereas before they would have been quiet about it. I mean, the British are very conservative in terms of sharing that stuff. I mean, I went to a dinner a couple of weeks ago where there was a guy from Wales who was saying, well, I'm going to vote out. And he was very positive. That's what he was going to do and giving the reasons why. I shared with him my views as well. And of course we were in the same camp, but nobody else around the table was willing to share their views, but they probably would on Twitter, you know? Yeah. And so, so I think there is a case of where when you're face to face with somebody, you might not want to share your political views, Mm -hmm. but if you're typing on Twitter in your living room late at night and you're watching TV, and you're getting frustrated and you've had a few drinks, you're going to tweet about it. Okay, so, so now I'll put that into LinkedIn terms for you, Michael. I have a true story before Trump even. Okay. Go on. Yeah, please so go. On. I actually volunteered, I said it wasn't very pol- pol- political, but I volunteered four years ago and made phone calls on behalf of Obama. Mm-hmm. I got fired from a client. And he said to me, if you support him, I can't work with you. <gasps> wow. wow. So I was really upset. And then I realized, and my husband's like, well, would you, if he supported Ron, like he said, you'd be fine. I'd be I'm fine if he supported Romney. I don't, I'm, you know, yeah, whatever right, at the time, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. perfectly fine with that. But so, but putting that in context with Trump, I get him more, but if that's how he felt, but I was devastated at first and then realized that's not someone I should be working with. So I literally, it was the second time in my whole life once was from a babysitting gig a long time ago I've ever been fired. And that was devastating. And I mean, it's, it's not a job, it was a client. But I realized like how passionate people are about this stuff. Yep. So you do have to watch out. You just have to be okay with the consequences. Right. Like you have to know right. that there may be consequences and you have to be okay with them. Right. Right. So, Michael, um, uh, uh, kind of put what you said about Twitter in into LinkedIn. Now, do you think that LinkedIn specifically is a good is is the place for politics? Is one of the news channels here? Hey, <laughs> like to say about themselves. You you're really putting me on the spot. <laughs> I've I've just had my illustrator do a comic strip panel to do with the EU referendum, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I've got four panels. I've got Boris Johnson, who is the the ex-UK mayor, who is in the Leave campaign. 
and I've got him dressed up in the Incredible Hulk outfit, standing on top of one of the carriages on the London Eye, uh, saying, I've made Britain great. I, I've made London great. I can do the same with Great Britain. And I've just shared that on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh-huh. So what, uh-huh. that one panel, and then I've got another panel which is coming out in another hour or so, which is um, David Cameron dressed up in his Batman costume because he believes he can save the world and there's like a spotlight in the sky which has got the EU flag. Mm-hmm. And, and then the third one is George Osborne, which is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And he's in a warehouse looking at two piles of money, euros and sterling, and he's going, oh gosh, I must tell Batman they are, they are stockpiling our money in case we leave. And then the fourth panel... They're funny. And the fourth yeah. panel is um, th- this chap, you won't know who he is, Michael Gove. He's also in the Leave campaign. He's Spider-Man climbing on top of the London Eye, warning Boris that Robin, uh, Batman and Robin are coming <laughs> and for him to come down because he's looking silly. Because everybody makes a joke of this guy, Boris Johnson, because he, he looks like a crazy guy. A, bit, a little bit like Donald. And... Um, but different, different. And so, yeah, I've put, I'm putting these four individual panels out and then the full comic strip out just mm-hmm. to promote illustrations that we can do for people. But I am sharing them on LinkedIn and I thought about it and I went, should I, should, you know what? I haven't said what my view is. I mean, everybody now knows if they're gonna watch this, but I would, I'm, I'm still happy to share it on LinkedIn because I don't think it will be too inflammatory for people to go, oh, you want to leave, I want to remain, I'm never going to do talk to you, I'm going to unfriend you now on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. I don't think you so, know, but maybe somebody will. Well, and I, you know, I had one person who left, right? So the, the thing about it is you, ha- you have to decide, there's a, a risk reward to everything, right. right? And so we have to, one of the things that I teach my kids, like, they're real rule followers. I'm like, if you're ever going to break the rule, you need to understand what is the absolute worst consequence possible. And if you're willing to live with it, you break the rule like that, yeah. you know, certain things. Right. So, you know, the, we have to look at that with everything. Right. right. So are we willing, I don't know, are we will, willing to take that risk? And if the answer is yes, then I think it is fine. Um, and then, you know, one of the things about we're all entrepreneurs, you know, we we're re- we have a little more leeway than if you work for a big corporation. I think. Uh, that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. Yes. And it's yeah. about values, yes. right? We, we've been working on values. I think if people have a strong value set around that politics and their beliefs, if you violate those values by not agreeing with them, then it's like... I can't talk to you anymore because mm-hmm. it's such a powerful thing for people. And it's not that powerful for me, to be fair. You know, if we're going to stay in, fine, we stay in. You know, you just got to go with the flow. And it's not going to make a huge difference in my life, to be honest. And um, so I think, yeah, I think it's values driven and people can be very hung up with politics as one of their key values. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. Okay. You see a lot of it, like Facebook, I see a lot of people talking about religion. Or right. you don't see that as much yeah. on Facebook. All right. right. Then. Well, Lynch is another taboo kind of thing with me, unless somebody asks specifically, you know, are you Catholic? And at that point, yes. And if they have, you know, they want to talk about that. But I mean, I'm never, I'm never bringing hope. this stuff up. You love, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's one do. person, Ray Edwards, who is a really high-end copywriter. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's he's really well known, and he has a mastermind. And he said, "I'm you now Christian. This is going to be Christian based. When I'm going to be really focused on bringing in Christian people only." Wow, he said, I'm going for this niche. So that's, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So I wouldn't be allowed in, but what if I still agree with the values? <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you don't have so, to, yeah, I, uh, exactly. Here's how what I feel. I feel like, well, I mean, I'm a believer that there's one God and everything else kind of stemmed from one God. So that's mm-hmm. just sort of my belief, but and whatever that is. But the one thing about really good religions is that they welcome other people in. Mm-hmm. 
no matter what the religion is, come in and sit with us, learn. Yeah, very right, true. Yeah. You know, so so a group like that, I can I'm fine with them saying this is all about Christian values. I think that's awesome, but don't let not let someone in because they're not there, and maybe they will be someday. Right, <laughs> but right, like whatever it is, or maybe they'll bring a different perspective. Like I used to go, um, one of my best friends um, was evangelical, and I used to go to Bible study with her because I was so interested in learning, and I had a whole other perspective on the Old Testament than any of them had that the way I grew up and what I was taught and for them it was huge value and then I got to learn about the New Testament that I never knew anything about so it was educational and enlightening, enlightening for everyone now I didn't convince them to go one way or the other or, or you know but it was really wonderfully insightful and educational and I got to learn some wonderful things about Jesus that I never knew, like, and they learned some great stuff, you know, so it was really wonderful. So I'm fine with having something religious based. I'm uncomfortable when it's closed to people that only think that way. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Without a yeah. doubt. Yeah, I would agree. I yeah. would agree. Yeah. Okay. So I, on that note, <laughs> on that I got to get, yeah. I got to go. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Drop a bomb and just go at that point. Here's the elephant. Here's the elephant. Now I'm going. Did you see Obama speak gonna, the other day? I'm going to take the elephant with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a great day. Right. Thank yeah. you, friend. Bread, Bye. Bye. Did you uh, see Obama's little speech the other day? He was talking about, in seven months, I'm going to be unemployed. I've got to get my resume in order, and I'm going to get on LinkedIn and see if I can find a job. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who's who's going to be the first to reach out to him and see if 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 they could do LinkedIn <laughs> consulting with him? Probably, he's probably had ten offers already, actually. So actually, he's going to be. He's got a speak. pending invitation from me for a <laughs> years now. <laughs> he so obviously, he needs it. help with social selling and building. He does. His, uh, yes, yeah, he, does. he does. Well, he's yeah. trying to use his BlackBerry to access LinkedIn still. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you actually imagine the job of redoing his profile? Amazing. Yeah, that would be great. I yeah. can retire. Yeah, absolutely. That would yeah. be great. That would be great. So we have, um, let's see, William, if, if you want to jump into the seat, uh, audio or video, please feel free. Otherwise, you know, hang back and, uh, and type any questions that you have into chat and, uh, and we'll be happy to answer them. So, um, so I think we're going to leave, uh, the, uh, the taboo talk in our, in our rear view mirror now, especially now that Prince left. um, what other things did we want to bring up this week? This is this is kind of the um, one thing segment, and Bryn certainly got us rolling. So, um, Michael, you uh, did you have a couple things that, that you want to talk about? Well, I can talk about something I'm working on at the moment. Uh, as I was getting prepared for the social sales GPS webinars, I was thinking of you know different things I can share uh, with people. And perhaps not make it the same. I don't know. We haven't got a lot of people on yet, but hopefully we will. And um, one of the things that I mantras that I have is uh, spending 20 minutes a day on LinkedIn each day. That's it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and doing different things in those 20 minutes and stopping after 20 minutes, not not continuing, because what I found that people people say, oh, I don't have time, you know. I said, well, how much time are you spending? Oh, God, once I get started, I could be on there for two, three hours. I said, well, don't, because if you spend two, three hours on there, you're going to feel guilty and you're not going to come back for another two weeks because yeah. you feel you've done your quota. So instead, just spend 20 minutes. And if 20 minutes is too long, spend 15 or 10, but m create a habit every day. So <laughs> there are some things. So, so I want to share with you something I... I'm re reading a little book that I actually came across by doing my Feedly, uh, getting RSS feeds for my Feedly. And there's one by, I can't pronounce his, name, his surname, Leo Barbutua or something. Uh -huh. And he's in, he's in California. And um, he 
writes this blog called Zen Habits. And he's published this little book called Zen Habits. And he says, if you want to start a task, start it really, really small. So he, he got me to prepare. In this little book, I'm only on page 10 or something because he doesn't want me to go any further. And I haven't purposely because I want to see and, and follow it. He says, on, so on day one, you have to, um, I can't remember now, but you've got, you've got to decide what the habit is going to be that you want a task that you want to do. So let's say it's LinkedIn, right? And then anyway, you don't start until day six. So on day two, you decide what is the reason you want to do it. I'll be back second, guys. Okay. okay. On, on day three, you set a trigger. What is the trigger that you're going to do? On day four, you decide, you know, what's time, what space, what space are you going to do where you're going to feel like you enjoy doing it? All, all these different things to get you prepared. And on day six, you start. And then he says, only spend a minute doing it. Just spend 60 seconds doing the first task and only do a minute for the next six days. But until you start developing a habit, because a minute isn't that long to actually do something. That's interesting. Now, I've I've actually violated the rules that he wrote because I've done I did 15 minutes. So what I did, I created an iTunes playlist on a, on different tracks that only last 15 minutes. So when it begins and finishes, I know I've got to stop. Right, so tomorrow I'm going to do another 15 minutes, and that's it on this particular task mm -hmm. that I've been not tackling. So I'm kind of saying to people out there, for your 15 or 10 minutes or one minute a day on LinkedIn, just start for the first week doing a little bit and start developing a habit. Because, because I think the biggest problem people have is starting. You know? Mm -hmm. Yep. If, even if it takes a minute to kind of log in, get into your LinkedIn, right, that's your minute done, get out, <laughs> you know? And then tomorrow, do a minute, you're already logged in and just like somebody's post and that's it. Yeah. And then the next day you go in, then, you know, accept an invitation. Or and then the next day you kind of reply to a connection request or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just starting tiny, tiny, small, developing a habit and then go in the flow and then do something every single day. Yeah. 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 It's funny that you mentioned that because, because at people links, the way we train our clients and their salespeople and marketing people and employees and everything is exactly in that style. So these cards pop up every single day, but it's in the hopes that they will integrate this into whatever their normal, um, sales activities are because um, because one thing that I always emphasize when I'm training in one to ones is that you know you probably should be doing some sort of sales activity every single day. Hopefully you've got that blocked out in your Outlook or whatever so that you're actually doing these. Just start integrating some of the social stuff in so at some point the social and newness of everything just kind of goes away and it all just becomes sales activities at that point. I've always told people that I think, you know, probably in like three to, or I had said that like in three to four years, I think that this whole notion of social selling is going to gradually kind of disappear and it's all going to be just sales. I think that now with the um, LinkedIn and, and, and Microsoft uh, and the Microsoft buyout of LinkedIn and Microsoft's, you know, now accepting acceptance of social selling, that timetable is probably going to get moved up quite a bit, especially as Microsoft starts um, starts integrating all of these um, LinkedIn style activities throughout their product line, which, you know, most people still use. So, um, you know, I really think that we're in the forefront of this sea change that's going to come probably within about the next or you know, probably by this time next year, you're probably going to start seeing this stuff really roll out because um, because the uh, buyout will probably be a couple months old at that point. Hopefully everyone in tech is yeah. on their toes and they start integrating and you start seeing all this new stuff roll out. At that point, I think 
that speed is really going to pick up on it. So one of the things that I'm emphasizing to clients right now is do this stuff now. You'll be ahead of the curve. You will actually take some of this business away from your competition that's probably going to start using this stuff in about a year's time or so. So now is the time to really start integrating this stuff and really start using it. LinkedIn and social media are all about momentum. If you just yeah. do a couple minutes a day, you'll see your profile views go up. You'll see more mm -hmm. likes on Twitter and more shares. Your SSI you tweet goes once up. A week, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a little bit every day it makes a huge difference. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So that's an excellent right. point, Michael. I, I love, I've been using the People Link platform every single day now. Mm -hmm. And I love the way the cards are being served up to me every day for mm -hmm. me to take a little bit of action. Right. Uh, now, some awesome. of the cards that are coming up, I'm already doing anyway. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So just reminders. Yep. Uh, and the other cool thing I discovered the other day is the RSS feed. Um, so I put my RSS feed on my blog in and it just created all of these extra articles to go in mm -hmm. for sharing to everybody. Right. And um, I, I just love that bite size kind of just do a few things each day. Yep. Uh, activity and it does just help you remember lock you into that activity Gets and eventually it becomes second nature right yeah yep it's it's it like really getting your cup of coffee in the morning <laughs> yep. that's it. lord knows that's a habit so might as well make you know all, all this other stuff i have to that's exactly i mean that's exactly what the people links platform is all about even if you're not on people links just doing that type of activity every single day, it will become a habit. It will become set, second nature. And and this perceived pain that you're gonna be going through, quote unquote, which actually isn't painful because none of this stuff really takes a long time to do. Um, you know, those, those, those couple of weeks that you're getting it started, they're really gonna pay off and you're really gonna start seeing results, sometimes even right away, depending on, depending on how strong your um, networks are already in terms of not only them reading your stuff, but them starting to share and then starting, you know, to spread your word because of the multiplicative effect and everything else. You could see results almost right away, depending. You can't guarantee that, of course, but it's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. So I've just shared my 20 minutes per day list. So, so whoever wants to use it, they can use it and enjoy it. Oh yeah, and, I'm feeling this. Yeah. Go ahead, no problem. <laughs> and and I will keep updating it and changing it in the same document as I think of other things. But I've I've you know I created this because I think it's useful for people to just you know do something with each day. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even if they just do a, f a couple of minutes each day, that's it. You know, yeah. it's, it, that's good. That's good enough. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's that's a great. In fact, I'm going to open that that up again just because I. So uh, check all LinkedIn mails and respond to as many as you can. Check invocations to connect with you, like, comment, or share interesting articles, especially from your target buyers. That's fantastic. Um, review your notifications flag for comments and likes on your own ports, uh, on your own posts rather, and, and respond accordingly. So none of this stuff is difficult, as you will see when you start rolling through these um, these uh, tasks that you do every day. And this is just a fantastic lesson, Michael. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so okay. that was my, my thought of the day. Okay, Ted, your thought for the day. I'm gonna trademark it. Well, that. it's something I rediscovered on LinkedIn. Okay. I used years ago, very successfully, mm -hmm. SlideShare. Have you logged into SlideShare recently? I keep it's telling like, myself that I'm going to, and I just yes, you know. I have, I have. Good There's for you. Seventy million visitors a month to SlideShare.net. Wow. And I saw some guy; he's starting to post regularly, and now he can run really cheap advertising to your presentations. But I looked at some of my posted years ago, and they're still getting views from like five years ago. Wow. So I need to re-embrace SlideShare. Wow. Great point, Ted. Great point. Any I've SlideShare tips? E boy wants to know about. Do we have any slide share tips? I would say probably the biggest one is just the ease of which that you can add slide share um, uh, slideshows or publications or whatever to your LinkedIn profile in all different areas. It's very easy to do. It will help 
build your credibility as you, you know, obviously one of the reasons why you're on LinkedIn and you're in social selling is, is to build the credibility of you and your company. So even if you're sharing company material, this all builds credibility. So, so the ability to import slide shares into your LinkedIn profile is huge. I think the yeah. cover slide is huge. You got to have a yes. good cover. It's like the cover yes. of your book. Yeah. So get their attention. Right. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Big writing as well, because it's it's quite a small player, even on the desktop. Mm -hmm. And so enlarge the fonts. Okay, um, that's a good point. And images are very good as well uh, because to draw people in, you know, and not too many, not too many slides. This is not death by PowerPoint. Right, right. So if you want to make a point, if you can make it in five or six slides, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, just to, you know, get people's attention. I've, I've started using it. Well, I'm collecting some screenshots of different things and I put it into a slide share mm -hmm. and included it in a pulse post and embedded it in on LinkedIn in a pulse post. It's very easy. Oh, that's to right. I forgot you can do that too. Yeah. 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 Pulse too. yeah and of point. course on your own blog as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there are some blog like medium doesn't, doesn't embed very well. I don't think. Okay. And, uh, but on your, on uh, hopefully in your own website, it will embed. Okay. Especially WordPress. It embeds well, I think in WordPress. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. I think yeah. you get a specific link for WordPress right. from uh, when you try and share it from SlideShare. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it's also great for getting tips and learning and education, you know? So there's free stuff there that if you subscribe to LinkedIn and Sales Solutions, they, they are publishing stuff that is really useful as well. Mm -hmm. So I recommend people follow LinkedIn and follows sales solutions and, and you know they, they publish some really great stuff. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So slide share. Yep. Absolutely. That's love that. Great, great. So um I've been uh, as um most of you don't know, but uh I've been having a heck of a morning with 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 meetings and weather basically and power going out and <laughs> not going out being involved in like all, all all different types of things but um but the one thing that that immediately comes to mind for me and and i've discussed this a couple times but but i'm but i've been thinking about ways to use this uh even more and i think it's fantastic it has to do more on the uh, twitter side and that's just the power of using twitter lists so you can make public lists you can make private lists you can follow individuals you can follow companies you can um you know you can the the power and just reasons why to use these lists are are mind-boggling, I think. And probably one of the um, biggest ways to use these lists is for prospecting companies. So you would obviously want to make this list private because you don't want people who are your competitors to know who you're prospecting because they can come in a swoop and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, but you can make a list of, you know, let's just say, Microsoft, for example. So, so within micro, so within this Microsoft list, you make a private. You can follow a couple of their Twitter accounts, and then you can follow contacts of people into whichever department that you're trying to sell into. And then you start listening and finding out what they're talking about, what their concerns might be through what they're tweeting, and then you can start reaching out, following you know more more formally following these people. Hopefully, they'll follow you back, and then start building relationships and at some point one of the goals of social selling as i always say is to take online conversations offline so then you can get calls in and things like that and then you can get the sales process started and then at mm -hmm. that point you could still continue to use that list let's say you get a process you know you get some kind of proposal into microsoft or whatever company it doesn't really matter and then you can use that list to continue to listen to start to retweet to start to comment on 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 the things that they're sharing share articles directly to them basically to kind of keep you and your company on their radar essentially mm -hmm. so that you can hopefully get your uh, proposal through quicker 
and get through to the sale. So, I mean, Twitter lists, and that's just one example, basically. You could use Twitter lists for all different types of things, but I think that they're very powerful, and in the sales process, they're probably underused quite a bit, I would say. There's just not enough people using them. And like I said, as social selling really starts to take off, you know, in about a year, and a year and a half or so, you're going to see more and more people doing this stuff. Now is the time to start doing this stuff today. I just did that last week with a client. He was just a CEO trying to reach another CEO. Mm -hmm. And the other CEO wasn't on LinkedIn very often. He was mm -hmm. hardly ever posting anything. So we looked at his Twitter profile and he had golf in there. And uh -huh. then he was tweeting about golf events. Okay. And my client was a golfer too. I said, we'll start tweeting about golf with him. Yeah. <laughs> so established a conversation on Twitter with him. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a perfect, a perfect example of using a list. That's kind of what I said, but it's kind of different at the same time. So like I said, this, the uses are truly endless for this. So, yeah. so here's an idea that I started and in fairness, I haven't taken too much action. It needs to be on my habit list. Mm -hmm. um, I created a list, which is called you shared my story. Uh, I'm sure I added both of you and I then gave a subtitle which goes incredible folks who engaged, retweeted, added, mentioned, hearted me or my story. And then I've got gratitude and a kind of namaste sign at the yeah. end of it. Mm -hmm. So by and that's public, of course. Right. So by noticing that people are sharing, liking or doing stuff to my content, I add them to that list so I can now go through it. I need, it needs to be added to my habit list. I need to, I can go through that daily list and I can do the same back for them. Mm -hmm. So, and it does, it actually doesn't matter who it is that did it, but right. I'm getting some engagement going on that level too. That's but great. It's, and it's also it's just all, an ego booster too, to them. I mean, you know, this guy's, this guy thinks I'm important enough that he puts me into this specific list. That's fantastic. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Very good. Very so good. I'll let you know how I get on with yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely. Great so, idea. So, so put that on your task list to let us know how that's going. Yeah. <laughs> I've just, I, I looked up your article on, on the Twitter list. Uh-huh. And my pulse has changed to your, like yours was the other week. Oh, okay, good. It's all, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really nice. Yeah, the new pulse display on articles is very, very nice. I, I actually like it a lot better. It, you know, you're focused on just that person's article without all those articles that you scroll on the side that you could care less about. I That's that's definitely a great move on, on LinkedIn's part. I definitely like that. Yeah, really cool. So okay. it is it is noon. It is practically noon. So everyone, if you're in the Eastern time zone, go to lunch and, you know, whatever <laughs> else, basically. So uh, for Ted Bedromo and Michael DeGroote, I'm Bob Woods. Social sales Wednesday, Wednesday happens every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific or wherever that is for you. Uh, get to us via socialsellingwednesday.com. Socialsellingwednesday.com. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. See you next week. Take Thank care. You. See you next week.